Today, we're going to have a look at how we can fine tune a Q&A reader model for open domain question and answering. Now, in open domain question and answering, we have what we can think of as three components. That starts with the vector database over here. And this stores a set of what we would call contexts, which are, if we're using text data, it's a set of encoded paragraphs. And to create these encoded vectors, we need what is called a retriever model, which comes over here. Now, this retriever model takes our paragraphs, converts them into, into vectors, over here and stores them in the, the vector database. Now, uh, we use this retriever again when we're asking questions. So we have a question and we say, it could be anything, let's just put Q for now and a question mark. And that also gets passed to our retriever model, uh, gets converted into a vector, and then it goes again into this vector database. The vector database identifies the most similar context vectors and returns them to us through the retriever. Then what we have there are, let's say we have, for example, 10 of the most similar contexts. Now these are paragraphs of text. What we can do is take those paragraphs of text, and this is the focus for this video, and feed them into a reader model. Now this reader model takes a look at those, those contexts, uh, the, the paragraphs, and also has a look at the question. So it views both of them and it says, okay, which part of the context answers the question? Okay, so we could have a big paragraph. Um, I think we are going to be using up to 384 tokens in uh, for our model, but it could be higher. And it's going to say, okay, which part of that paragraph answers the question? I'm going to say from here to here. Okay, and outputs that to us. So we get a specific answer. And it also works as a ranker for the 10 contexts that we have produced. Now, which the way that we order the answers will depend, maybe we just want to use a reader score, or maybe we want to combine both the reader and retriever scores in some way. So that's a full open main question answering system. We're going to be focusing on fine tuning our own reader model. Now to fine tune our Q&A reader model, we, we need data. So we're going to be going with the typical question answering data set, and that is squad or Sanford question answering data set. Now this is super popular and you probably see it a lot. Now to download this data set, we're going to be using Hugging Faces data sets library. So if you do need to install it, all you need to do is write pip install data sets and that will install it for you. And then you have access to all of the data sets stored in Hugging Faces data set uh, hub. So we are getting a squad v2, which contains a few unanswerable questions, and we'll have a look at uh, an example of that later. And we are for now getting the training set because we're going to be training our model. Now, there's a few things we need to consider here. So if we have a look at, uh, let's, find an example. So there's one here, it's a bad example. This example here. In our, in that data set, each sample has ID, title, context, which is important for us, a question, again, important, and this answers. Now, I've already formatted this, so in the actual data set, you don't have this answers end value. We actually just have answer start and text, but it's fine because answers end, we just calculate as the answer start plus the length of text. It's super easy. But what we can see here, okay, we have the question, 
when did Beyonce start becoming popular? And we, in this answers, we get the answer begins at position 269. So in here, if we, we go through 269, I'm not going to count, I'm just going to find the answer, uh, begins here. So this position here is 269, this I. And the answers end, which we, we have calculated here, but we, we just calculated the, from the length of the actual text, it takes us all the way over to this. So that is a specific answer within that context. So in our, when we're training our model, we're going to be feeding a few of these things in. But just know that the answer start that we have here is a position in the string. It's not the token position, which is what we're going to be feeding into our model during training. So we are going to need to find a way of converting from the uh, string position to token position, which we will we'll cover. Now, uh, let's just visualize that a little bit better. So uh, we have the, this is a, a different example. So we have the question over here. We have a, a small context on, on the right. And what we're going to do is tokenize that using a, a hooker face tokenizer. And what that is going to do, it's going to format our text into this sort of format here. So we have a CLS, it's a special token that appears at the end of every sequence uh, when we are using a, a tokenizer, and then we get the question, okay? Then there's a separator token, followed by the context, followed by another separator token. And then as well as that, we would also find that we have padding tokens that appear after this. Uh, but we don't need to really worry so much about that. Now, this then, this tokenized for or this uh, formatted version of the text where we have the question and context together, that gets converted into token IDs. So we'd have like the CLS token would be here, and then here we'd have the first separated token, and over here we'd have the uh, final separated token. And over here, these two tokens here represent the the actual answer, so Normandy. Now, in reality, it's actually this one that is Normandy. But when we're passing the start position and end position, we are passing, I don't know what token this is, let's say it's number 18. Okay, so Normandy is token number 18. And M position is number 19. And what this means is when we have our tokens, so we'll just call them tokens, pretend this is like a variable, which is a, a list of our token IDs. And what we do is we index that, so we go 18 up to number 19, right? That's going to give us just a single word, which is Normandy, or the single token ID that represents the word Normandy. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how the sort of tokenization process looks like. So our problem is, okay, how do we go from um, the, the answer start position, which let's say it's character, let's say 110, all the way over to a character, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so 118, <laughs> okay? How do we convert from those string start and end positions to these token start and end positions, 18 and 19 over here? That's our first task. Another thing we also need to consider is, okay, these uh, character start and end positions are based on if we only are looking at the context, but we're not only looking at the context, we're looking at both the question and the context in the same uh, string. So we actually need to shift these token positions by, well, let's say we have, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? Let's say we have eleven tokens in that question. It means we need to actually add eleven to each one of these values. So in reality, we will get uh, twenty-nine and thirty for our start and end positions. Okay, so we need to deal with that. So let's have a look in the code at how we would actually 
do that. Okay, so let's start at the start. We first get the n position as you know as part of the string. So all we're doing here is we're extracting the uh, the start position. So answer start. I think that's the it's two six nine down here. So this is for the Beyonce example. Um, we are also extracting the gold text, which is like the, the golden answer. That is our answer, which is the in the late 1990s. And all I'm doing here is getting the end position by taking the start position plus the length of that golden text. Okay, and we get this for the end position. Okay, reasonably simple. Now, come to here, we can... All I've done here is I've set up a function which is just going to go through and get all of the end positions for us. It's super simple. Um, and we use this map method. So this is because we're using plugin face data sets, we have this data set object and we can iterate through all the examples uh, using uh, this map lambda um, syntax. And we're just applying that function here, get character positions, which returns it actually returns the text, answer start, and the answer end um, back to us. All we're doing here is initially we have like a list, and our text and answer start are in a list, but there's only one item in those lists. So I'm just extracting them out of the list. And yeah, so from there we, we get this. So beforehand, answer start here is actually a list with a single item 269 inside. Okay, so I can maybe I just show you quickly. It's more obvious what we're doing there. Not this one. So if we go squad zero, you see, okay, these are our answers before, and after that, these are our answers. Okay, super simple, nothing, nothing crazy there. And then we move on to the tokenization step. So tokenization. You know, we're using hugging face uh, transformers this time. So everything is we're using here is hugging face. So we're going to pip install uh, transformers if we need to. Um, and then we're just initializing a, a BERT tokenizer. So BERT based on case. Because this is the model that we're going to be fine tuning as well. And then again, we're going to use that map lambda syntax to tokenize both our questions and our context together. Okay, so this is going to give us question context pairs with that separator special token in the middle. Uh, we're going to truncate anything longer than 385, 384 tokens. And we're saying oh, here we want to pad up to that length as well. So anything shorter than that is going to get padded. We're going to add those padding tokens. Um, this is just saying yes, we do want to truncate if anything's beyond that length. And then here we're going to return the offsets mapping. Now this is important, uh, we'll see why in a minute, but this is what we're going to be using to go from character positions or string positions to token positions. It's really, uh, really useful. And then this tokenizes the text into this format that we saw before. So CLS question, separator, context, separator again, and then we'd also have padding. Uh, so if we, have a look at what we have now. So we have what we had before with the, um, the ID, title, context, question, answers. But we now also have uh, three new tenses by default, which are the uh, input IDs, which you see here. So they're literally the, the text that we have converted into a transformer readable uh, token IDs. Okay, so that's what we have there. Uh, you also, it would be more useful if I, maybe I can just open this. A little bit of scrolling here, sorry. Okay, and then we have token type IDs. Now we use these to tell us uh, where sentence or the question is and where the context is. So you can see here we have these zeros. These represent the question or the tokens uh, of the question. And then these ones down here represent the tokens of the context. And if we keep going down, 
we'll see that they turn back into zeros. This is not because we have uh, question, co question tokens following our context tokens. This is where we have the padding tokens. Okay, they're also represented by um, zeros. Okay, uh, scroll down and we also have attention mass. So this is, um, we have ones in the positions of real tokens and we have zeros in the positions of where there are padding tokens. And this tells our model uh, where to apply the attention mechanism and where to uh, not apply it. Okay, where there's a zero, we have padding tokens. So there's no point applying um, attention to those tokens because we just ignore them. They're not useful. Okay, and there'll be one more. So this, so they're the three default tensors, and we also had that return offset mapping uh, or offset mappings parameter set to true, and this is what that will return. So we have list, and what we have here are the start and end positions of each token. So uh, we start with the CLS token that doesn't exist in our original uh, strings so it is it starts at zero ends at zero because it isn't there but we do have i don't remember what the first word is first word is when right so the first word of our question is when uh, because it's when did beyonce start becoming popular so uh, from those positions so those character positions uh, w h e n they're the first character positions, and we know that because this is in the, uh, the, or at least position number one in this list of offset mappings, we know that when has been assigned to the token at position number one. So that's going to be useful because later on um, we will be able to take the character start and end positions and use this to, to map them to token positions. One thing to note though, is that we have the question positions here, and then it goes back to zero for the context positions. So the first word in the context is Beyonce, and I assume that's probably about seven um, letters long. Okay, and then the answer I think is at 200 and, it's like 268 or, or something along those lines. So we would come all the way down here and we say, okay, where's 268? Um, it's here, okay? So the answer would start here with this, uh, with this token, okay? And then we'd also find for the character end, maybe it's 268 and say, okay, it, it belongs here. So that means that the span of our answer in token positions is from, from that, let's say this is position number 24 or something, uh, up to position number 29. Okay, that is really, that's all there is to it. It's not too complicated. So to actually deal with that, uh, there's also the, the decoded um, text here, by the way. So you have CLS question, separator, context, and they have all these padding down here. So we're gonna come down here. The first thing we need to do is calculate remember before we said we have the question followed by the context so we need to find the length of the question so that we can shift all of the uh, token positions by that value okay so what we do is we take the token type ids and we find uh, where the zero tokens first stop so that's the position where our sentence a or, or question uh, stops and we move on to the context. So we do that and then we also sum the token type IDs because the only ones in there represent the tokens of our context. So we can just sum that and what we get is the, the question length is nine tokens long and the context length is 165 tokens long. Okay, so that's really super simple um, I wanted to just show you here. So if we decode from or decode the input IDs from the start to the end of the question length, we get the question part. And if we do the same, but from the question length to the context length plus the question length, because again, we're shifting by the, the question length there, we get the context, right? So that's, yeah, super uh, simple, nothing crazy going on there. 
Um, so then we can get the context mappings like that. Um, so then we have our context mappings here and we're going to use those uh, to get the positions, uh, the token positions of our answer start and end. Okay, and then we come down here and this is the code we actually use to get those start and end positions. So we go through, we're just getting the uh, character start and end positions here. And I was saying, okay, if the character start is between like the start of the mapping and the end of the map mapping, then that means that this position, uh, because we're looping through each one, is the token start position. We do the same for the character end to get the, the token end. And at this point, if we find this, okay, if we find this before the end, we break. Uh, otherwise, we just go right to the end of the, the mappings. Uh, but if we don't find the character end before we reach the end of the mappings, we go into this final uh, bit of logic here. And if we reach that, that means that the end of the answer is out of range, which probably means it has been truncated off of the, um, the actual context. So in that case, there is no answer, and we set the token start and token end to zero. Okay, so that's it. Okay, and then this is just the, like the function to deal with all of this. Um, so it's the same same thing again. Uh, I won't go won't go through it. And then we're just uh, using the the map and lambda syntax as before to apply that. Okay, and then we want to. So in our data set, we have a few unnecessary features, the ones that we need anyway. Are just the input ID, the tension mask, and so on. Um, and also the start positions and end positions, which we've just created. You can see two of them here. Okay, so they're the token versions of our character start and end positions. So we need to drop anything that is not uh, one of these inputs, which is the input IDs, attention mask and token type IDs, or uh, target label, which is the start positions and end positions. So we have a few, a few of those are here. So what we do is just, we do squad, remove columns, okay? So this is plugin based data sets uh, method here. And then at the end of that, we, we have these five features left. And that's it. So with that, we can move on. You know, our data is ready and we can move on to actually uh, fine tuning or, or training. So uh, the first thing we need to do when we're training a model is initialize the model. Okay, so we, we initialize the model here, uh, come down and then we can move on to setting up the training arguments. So we're going to be using uh, the Transformers uh, Libraries uh, Trainer utility, uh, which is really useful. I definitely recommend you probably do the same. Otherwise, you can write sort of like a PyTorch training loop or TensorFlow training loop if you're, if you're using that. Um, and we're going to go with a batch size of 24 uh, for epochs. I'm going to go for three here although you can try four as well, you you might be able to get better results with that. And what we're doing here is we're setting where to save all of the model checkpoints, okay? Uh, we're setting the learning rate. Again, I'm using two eaten minus five here, uh, which is what is used by the, uh, for the deep set, um, BERT base squad two model. Uh, but in the actual uh, base paper, they actually use three e to the minus five. So you can play around with those and see what works best. And then for the batch size, again, that's just from the uh, BERT squad two paper. And number of training epochs, again, I said, you know, you can change it as you want. We have a weight decay of 0 0.1, and then we warm up uh, the, the training steps, the learning rate for 10% of the total um, training steps. Okay, now when we're feeding our data set into our model, it's basically just going to feed in a list of dictionary objects, and we can't use that for training our model. We need to batch all of those together into like a single PyTorch tensor. Uh, so we use this default data collator to do that. Uh, and then we set up our trainer. We're going to train on, on GPU if possible, otherwise, CPU. Um, and then we initialize our trainer like this. Um, nothing, nothing weird going on there. The args are just the training arguments we just defined. And then we train. Okay, so that's how we fine tune our reader model. 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful, and I will see you in the next one.